Hello and welcome to my creating room. My name is Brooke Shaden. I'm a fine art photographer and general artist because it's really hard to define what we do these days. But one of the things that I do is Photoshop. And I thought it would be really fun to create a new series all about breaking down images in Photoshop, talking about why I made them, how I made them, and showing all the steps in between. So join me. We're going to make these quick, informational, inspirational videos, and they're coming out every week. So let's jump in. I'm in Photoshop right now, and I tend to work in Photoshop exclusively. So I create with a camera, specifically a Sony camera, and from there, I take my images directly into Photoshop from Bridge. So that's where we're working today, is in Photoshop. This is my workspace as I would normally have it set up. I really wanna to work to demystify this process because creating does not have to be difficult. Coming up with amazing art, that's the challenge, but it doesn't have to be difficult to make something. And I wanna break down those barriers. So I'm a self-portrait artist, and that means that I create by myself. So I take my camera, my tripod, and myself, and whatever other props and things I have to lug with me out into the field, meaning literal fields most of the time. I shoot on location a lot, and I shoot wherever I can get to. So fields, forests, mountains, creeks, my bedroom, outside of my house, wherever I can. I don't have a studio, I don't have an assistant, I don't have big budgets, I just have me and what I can carry. And that's what we're gonna look at in Photoshop. So diving in here, this is an image of mine actually from 2010, maybe even 2009, I'm not sure, but it's pretty old but it's one of my favorite images that I've ever made. And the first thing that you'll notice if you look at the layers palette in Photoshop is that I only have three layers here for this image. It's just some texture that I've put on top. And if you want any of my textures, they're totally free to download on my blog. If you go to promotingpassion.com, you'll see a link there for free textures. So that's what I'm using, but the thing about this image is that I have edited totally destructively in this image. Because when I first started in Photoshop, I had no idea what I was doing. I still largely don't know what I'm doing, but I've got a pretty good system now. But back then, I didn't know not to combine my layers because I would lose all of the steps of my work. So this image isn't gonna be that much fun to deconstruct because it's just this, just these textures popping on here. So instead, uh, I thought that we would open up some of the original images. This is the actual original image that I started editing. And you can see from this to this what changed. Maybe just a little bit of the skirt um, was added on from this image. So let's dive in and edit this from the beginning and just see where I would start and how this would end up. So here we've got an image that is the normal two to three ratio of a photographic frame. And I like to get rid of that. So I'm immediately going to start cropping this image. And for the sake of time, we're just gonna crop. So I'm gonna leave that about there. Well, I can use my arrow keys to get it exactly where I want it and say, okay. Now I know that I did use some of this skirt. So I'm gonna use my lasso tool to just grab some of that skirt there and copy it and paste it over. And I'm just gonna start to blend the skirt in there to make a, a little bit more of a round shape. It's not quite perfect for me, it's not totally the shape that I want, but that's okay because we have so much room to play. So if I wanted, I could go into Edit, Transform, Warp and just start moving this image around wherever I think it's best to create whatever shape I want. And we have that ability in Photoshop because that's the beautiful thing about creating is that we have this ability to create something out of nothing, to make something tangible that wasn't there before. So why not manipulate an image to be exactly what your imagination can dream of? So that's what we're doing. I've got layer one here. That's my little skirt layer that we just put on. And I'm going to create my little layer mask here. And in order to erase some on my 
brush tool on black, with my opacity all the way up, and I'm just right clicking to make sure my hardness is down. And I'm just going to start to erase any hard edges that there might be, just right through there. Good. It looks pretty good to me. Um, but you'll notice one glaring mistake, which is that we have a tripod in this picture. So let's get rid of the tripod. That's on my background layer. I'm just gonna duplicate that so that I can go back if I mess something up here. And with my clone stamp tool, I'm just gonna get rid of those legs. So really quickly, just alt clicking to create a set of pixels and then covering up the legs. We don't really want that there because these shadows that we're seeing are from the tripod. So we're just gonna get rid of some things. It doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not um, like going in for every detail at the moment and that's totally okay. So we're just getting rid of some things. And so now let's take a look at this versus the original. I'm gonna go ahead and close this image because that's all we really needed from it. So from this one to this one, we're looking pretty good. I mean, that looks really similar so far with composition, but we've got a lot of work to do. So if I'm gonna go in here and start to play with the color, the contrast, things that I can see are definite differences, I'm going up to my layer one, so I'm clicked on my top layer, and then I'm clicking on my adjustment layers and using curves. And from here, I'm going to start to manipulate this image so that the blacks aren't as black, the whites aren't as white, and then create some contrast right in the midtones. And you can see how that just immediately brightens things up and gives it a lot more contrast. I think that looks great. So let's look at this again, just that versus this. We've got the contrast now that this image needs. So let's go and make another curve. You could auto definitely just do the same curve that we had before, but my brain doesn't work like that. So I'm on a new curve on top of everything, affecting all the layers below it. I'm clicking on blue, and I'm just gonna start to add a bunch of yellow into this picture. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the red, just starting to change the color profile of this picture. So let's click back. So what have we done here? I think that what is missing is that there's still too much cyan, but there's also too much yellow in the face, in the, in the, in the tone of the face compared to this one. So let's see what we can do. And I don't know the answer automatically to this question. So let's just explore. So I'm going into color balance because I know that back then I used to use color balance a lot and I'm taking away the cyan, adding red, adding yellow. We can always play with this magenta um, slider, but I tend not to so much. And so we can see that's getting a little closer, just a little, right? Just a little. But there's more brown in this image, and so that makes me think that I either desaturated it or added a sepia tone. So let's go into hue saturation and just see if desaturating helps. And I think that that does help just a little bit. I still think that this image needs more contrast. So I'm back in curves, creating more contrast there. And something that I think is interesting about this image is that it has a lot of, um, a lot of contrast and sort of sparkle going through the dress. So let's go ahead and add that with this lasso tool. And I'm just going to select the areas that I want to be a little bit poppier right click and feather, do 150 pixels, and I'm creating another curve adjustment just in those areas, just to make the dress really pop, really stand out. Awesome. So now we go back and forth, back and forth. So it's not perfect. We didn't get it exactly where we needed it to be, and a large part of that is the texture application. I love applying textures to my images, so, in this case, I would add a texture. I don't have the same textures that I used before for this image, so I have to find a new one. I'm here in my textures folder, and from here, I'm just gonna choose one that I think would be nice, or maybe a couple. I think these two would be quite good. 
So let's bring those into Photoshop. I'm just opening both of them without making any adjustments. They're already in black and white. And we'll talk more about that in future episodes. So I'm taking the texture over. I'm gonna drop it on top and change the blending mode to soft light. That's a little bit too subtle, maybe to lighten. And then we'll lower the opacity. And you can see that it's bringing a more earthiness to this, really lightening up the shadows. So I'll leave that as it is. And let's grab this texture as well, just to get them both layered on there. And same thing with lighten and then lowering the opacity quite a bit. Now on those layers, I'm going to create curve adjustments and pin them down just to make the textures a little bit darker and stand out a little bit more with contrast. Same thing, pinning it down, adding darkness and contrast to the textures. But you know, we can also add color back into the textures. So I might choose to add some red into that texture. Um, maybe on the other one, I want to add some yellow into the texture. And this is going to allow us to bring some of that earthiness into the image. This one has a little bit more, but like I said, it's just a different image. You can't edit the same image the same way twice. That's what I think. And I really do believe that. So I'm almost finished here and we're going to make the final comparisons between them. I think it's looking pretty awesome though. Ready? Okay. Not bad for just a few minutes of editing. So in future episodes, we're gonna break down the images that I have because I have learned how to save all of my layers and how not to delete them. So we're going to go through so many of my prior images, break them down, talk about the process, but most importantly, I hope that this inspires you to get out there and create. Thanks for watching.